If you attended school in North America, there's a good chance that you learned at least a little something about the transatlantic slave trade, where millions of Africans were stolen from their homes and sent to the Americas to be slaves. But did you know that there was another route these people could have gone? Lasting for much longer than the more commonly known transatlantic slave trade, the Arab slave trade stole people primarily from West, North, and Southeast Africa. Welcome to Crazy Histories, where we bring you the craziest and weirdest facts from human history. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive, disturbing, or otherwise not suitable for everyone. Viewer discretion is advised. What was the Arab slave trade? The Arab slave trade is a much older thing than the Atlantic was. On a small scale, it can be dated back to 2500 BCE. From then, it evolved and changed over time, branching into numerous other slave trade routes throughout Africa, the Middle East, Eastern Europe, and even into Central Asia. To understand a topic like this, the best place to start is the beginning. During the pre-Islamic era of the Arabian Peninsula, the majority of the slaves came from child abandonment or from selling children into slavery. It isn't known how common the latter was, but we do know that it did happen on at least a small scale. A fraction of the slaves would have been from Europe or the Caucasus that were captured by Beduoins. Another minority would be grown native Arabs, some of whom were being punished by the law, though they were usually ransomed nomad tribes. After Islam made its way to the Arabian Peninsula, it brought its customs, laws, and the Pax Islamica with it. Pax Islamica simply means peace among the Islamic states. This peace meant that there were no slaves coming in from war or raids. There were also Islamic legislations against the abuse of slaves that limited the extent of the slave network in Arabia. The slave trade through the Islamic world, though, did not stop just because of those two things. In fact, in a bit of irony, the Pax Islamica actually can be pointed at for leading to a much larger and harsher slave trading network than before. It was the Islamic laws against the enslavement of Muslims that led the Arabs to look outside their region for new slaves. One of the suppliers to the Arab slave trade was the Solomonic dynasty in Ethiopia. They regularly sold slaves from the Nile Valley or from the recently reconquered Muslim provinces. Slaves were brought from all over North, West, and Eastern Africa to be taken and spread through the Arab world across the Sahara. Just because the Arabs traded slaves in Eastern Africa doesn't mean that's where the slaves were from. They could have been taken from anywhere in the northern half of the continent and transported along the Trans-Saharan trade routes. These had already been in use for over millennia to move products and goods. These routes connected West Africa with North and East Africa in a variety of ways, all moving through the grueling desert. The trading routes were initially established after North Africa was conquered in the 8th century. Several new groups ventured into Sub-Saharan Africa. They started by following the Nile south into Nubia and then ventured west. The Arabs were one of these groups. Slaves were often acquired during violent raids. They would then force the slaves to march across the dangerous Sahara to the east, where the slave markets were. Slaves could also be purchased by the traders from local black rulers. These slaves could be their own people or from neighboring villages that they ambushed. Sometimes children were taken from their families to be sold. They would be lured away from others with fresh dates or other treats and then snatched. One historian named Paul Lovejoy estimates that around 6 million people were transported through the Sahara as slaves during the Middle Ages, 650 to 1500 AD. He adds that of those forced to walk through the desert, roughly half did not survive the journey across the sea. After the long and dangerous march across the Sahara, the stolen people could expect the next part of their journey to be watery. Not always, but generally, slaves were sent to the Middle East, the Indian Ocean Islands, including Madagascar, the Indian subcontinent, and eventually to the Americas. This part of the slavery journey is now referred to as the Indian Ocean Slave Trade. It also existed before the rise of the Arab slave trade, but really took off when the Muslims began needing more slaves in Arabia. This began when Muslim Arab and Swahili traders won control of the Swahili coast, and therefore the sea routes, which was around 800 CE. Once they arrived at the coast, the slaves would be taken to a number of slave markets along the East African coast. While some slaves' journeys ended here, most would be forced to travel across the Indian Ocean. The largest port and slave market in East Africa was in Zanzibar. The treatment of slaves 
although we don't have the same type of records for the Arab slave trade as we do for the Atlantic. We know that the slaves were not treated well. Between the violence and horrid journey to their final destination, rape and castration, it was a terrible life to lead. In an effort to stop slaves from reproducing with each other, and as a way to crush their morale, many men were castrated. This was a brutal practice that killed as many as 60% of men that had the procedure done to them. Young African girls were targets of the slave traders so that they could be sold as concubines, which is a nice way of saying sexual slave. Some of the slaves taken from Africa were used as soldiers. Another way to phrase that is that the slaves were used in battle as the first to die. This was a practice that goes back to at least before 696, which is the year that a slave soldier revolt happened in modern day Iraq. Later, there was a series of slave rebellions called the Zanj Rebellion between 869 to 883 BCE that took place in the city of Basra, also in modern day Iraq. How many slaves were there? It's hard to say how many Africans were stolen into slavery for the benefit of the Arab slave trade. This is because the slavers did not keep the same type of records that their Atlantic counterparts did. Through the few records that we do have, historians have made their estimates over the years, and it can be a bit of a controversial topic. One estimate says that Muslim traders sold around 1,000 African slaves every year from 800 to 1,700. During the 1,700s, that number grew to around 4,000 per year and then shrank back slightly to 3,700 between 1800 to 1870. The reason for this uptick in the 1700s is because of new access to better ships. This led to new trade, which required more slaves. The increase in trade can also in large part be blamed on the creation of a massive plantation complex. These plantations produce things like spices, coconuts, grain, oil, and sugar, these were not just used locally, but were traded on a global scale. Some historians put the total around 8 million people between 800 to 1920, which averages out to 5,700 people per year, most of which would have been taken through Zanzibar. Most scholars, though, put the total number even higher at 9 million. One historian, Paul Lovejoy, has what some consider to be the best estimate of the number of slaves taken from Africa. He estimates that the 17th century saw 100,000 slaves leave Africa, the 18th century saw 400,000, and the 19th saw more than 1.6 million Africans enslaved. This towers over the other estimates, especially in later years. Lovejoy says that half of these slaves would have been sent overseas, while the other half would have been kept to work on the East African coast, after the Middle Ages. As more slaves were brought into the Middle East to do hard agricultural work, it became a more demeaning job for non-slaves to do. So, many found other work, which just meant that more slaves were needed to fill those empty positions. European clients primarily wanted slaves that were men to work the fields. Middle Eastern merchants, though, also wanted women and girls so that they could be sold as concubines. The demand for women was so high that women could fetch double what men did at the markets, and women were taken at a rate of 3 to 1 to men. Early 1900s saw even fewer slaves being used for agricultural work, though there were still many that were being used for field work. Instead, more people were being used as domestic servants. The luckiest of slaves, if there really is such a thing as a lucky slave, were used as bodyguards for rulers and the rich. In later times, it was common for slaves to be used for clam diving in order to harvest pearls and especially in date farming. The end of the Arab slave trade Later in history, the British were openly against the slave trade in the Indian Ocean and said that they would work to put an end to it. In reality, the campaign didn't last long and wasn't that effective. Of the slaves that were freed by the British many died. Those that didn't die experienced very similar circumstances as before they were freed. Even after Europe and America banned slavery, the Arab slave trade continued. In fact, Slavery was not officially outlawed in many Arab nations until the mid to late 20th century. It is commonly believed, though, that slavery is still happening on some level today. When it comes down to it, history is full of many dark spots that are too often ignored. The treatment of the African people during the Arab slave trade is just one of those dark times. The murder of millions of people has largely been forgotten by many Americans and Europeans, and it shouldn't be anymore. A Welsh explorer named Henry Morton Stanley who saw the slave trade firsthand in the 1800s said it best when he said, The black blood flows toward the north, the equator smells corpses.
Thank you for watching this episode of Crazy History. Let us know in the comments if you had ever heard of this other massive slave trading network. If you like the information in this video, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any videos in the future.